What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I know I joke a lot, and this video is no joke. I'm in the gym, and I see Evelyn Yang pop up on the screen, and I'm like, okay, well, what's the story? So, and I find the video online of Evelyn Yang's interview with CNN, and I am not even going to lie. I was literally in tears um, listening to her tell her story. I'm going to be honest with you guys. There was definitely a part of me that was like, why now? Why is this coming out now? Right on cue, that part of the interview comes up where she says, um, you know, because of being out on the campaign trail and talking to these people and these experiences that I'm having and realizing that I now have this platform, I felt like this was an opportunity for me to actually take it and use it for something good. And I'm no woman. I've never been in this situation. I have women in my life and, and I I've want to do my best in any way, in any form or facet to protect them and be advocates for them and to always be around. Um, but I mean, just hearing this story is, is heartbreaking, man. I mean, uh, I don't know how familiar you guys, how familiar with this you guys are, but just the broad details are she was assaulted by her doctor while she was pregnant. It was hard to hear. It was, it was definitely tough. She, you know, she was definitely emotional, but yeah, the question of, you know, why would this come out now? You know, I definitely had that question in the back of my mind, but you know, hearing her explanation, I mean, that's, that's perfectly legitimate. I mean, why do you want to do this now? What do you want to accomplish now? My uh, personal life and this growing uh, public life, they're, they're not separate. In, in this case, my experience with the sexual assault and then what happened, all that happened afterwards, is such a <sighs> powerful and upsetting example of the truth that women are living with every day. And I just happen to be able to have a platform to talk about it. I need to use that voice. I feel like it's something that's an obligation, but also a privilege. In, in life, you know, we get put in situations where we have the opportunity to amplify a message or to do something that, you know, previously we probably kept to ourselves because it was just our private thing. But if you have the opportunity, if you have the spotlight and she's able to shed light on, on a person who is literally uh, an actual predator and then hearing that she didn't get justice because the DA had made a deal. Six more victims have uh, come out um, since that interview aired yesterday, this particular doctor, which is crazy. You know, she said when this happened to her, she didn't report it, you know, initially. And that's just kind of what happens. You know what I mean? They don't report it because they feel like they don't want to make people around them feel bad. Like, you know, she said she didn't want to make Andrew feel like, oh, you weren't there because you were traveling for your work and she didn't want to make it a big thing. So she kept it to herself. And then there's somebody else who's getting assaulted. After this campaign is over, I can't see myself relinquishing my responsibilities um, I just feel like this is a calling, like this whole thing that has happened over this time from this campaign, this humanity first message, this is not just a, a campaign slogan, this is real. That's why the Yang Gang is, is special. Like this is not just a group of people who um, rally behind a candidate. Like this is really a special thing. Anybody who's a part of this, you are all a part of something great. And I think we're doing a lot of good in the world just just on behalf of the humanity first message, like not even on the Andrew Yang campaign or, you know, trying to get votes. And this is way bigger than that. I've done more volunteer work in the last five weeks than I've done in the last, uh, like probably five years. You know what I mean? I just, how can you not want to get out and use your platform for good? And that's, I'm happy to see her doing this. I'm sad that it's, ha that it's happened, but you know, hopefully with this new spotlight, you know, she can get justice because, you know, ultimately that's, what this is all about, man. She she really deserves justice in this case, especially hearing like these are the people who we, we trust our lives with, man. Our our doctors, our our teachers. Um, we put our we take our loved ones and we drop them off and we hope nothing terrible happens to them, and we take it for granted. Like we don't even think about it sometimes. But like no, we're we're trusting these people to have our our person or our loved one come back in the same condition that we drop them off in and. 
sadly, if something happens, we often don't even know. Like, not necessarily. I mean, we'll maybe find out years later or, or months later, but we're not. We don't necessarily find out in the moment for whatever reason. And you know, I I never like it when people say, "Oh, if that was me, I would do this." Like, you have no idea what you would do in that situation. And I really do not judge people for how they behave in these situations because we all think we have a plan. Like there's that famous Mike Tyson quote, uh, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the nose or something like that, where, yeah, that, yeah, we all say, oh, if that was me, I would totally do this and that would never happen because I'd pull out my, my, uh, my, my pepper spray and then I'd run out and blah, blah. Okay, yeah, sure. Maybe, maybe you would do that. Or maybe you'd be like, oh, well, this is the person who I'm trusting and they have years of experience and sure, they, maybe they got to know what they're doing. I'm not going to, I'm not going to question them, but I, I just want to say I'm, I'm thankful that Evelyn Yang has, has used her platform to do this because this is not an easy thing. I can't imagine having a national spotlight on me and choosing to disclose this information to the world. She is, that's a strong lady right there. Because even when the spotlight goes off and when the campaign is over, she's just a person. And now her story is out. Now she's probably getting calls from her cousins and her aunts and her uncles. And it's just like, how did I not know? And all because one person doesn't, not to blame that person, but I mean, the one, the first person doesn't, you know, file that complaint or contact the authorities. So then time comes and the next person goes in and they don't say anything. And I mean, I think when the guy originally went to, uh, went to court, you know, he had like 16 victims. Even she said that uh, she tried for two years to keep her name out of publication. Like Evelyn Yang was actively trying to keep her name out of publication um, from the, on this case. And that was before. That was when she was just Evelyn Yang of, from, of Andrew Yang the, from the nonprofit. It's 19, 19 accusers. He was charged for two counts. Thank you, Alex. Sorry. Sorry for my misinformation. So Yang and 31 other women are now suing Columbia University, saying they actively concealed, conspired, and enabled Haddon's crimes, according to CNN. You see, this is, again, this is why when Yang talks about human value, yeah, there's, there's, why do you think that Columbia University is going to step up and, uh, and, and protect this person they have a financial interest in? You know what I mean? This is what you do. When your money is tied to something, you're going to protect it over the human because the human doesn't matter the human is just a, that's just a person i want people to have human value that means a lot more to me than protecting a brand